Zinedine Zidane, the maestro, the magician, the Zizou of the footballing world. With a career spun from pure footballing gold, Zizou danced on the pitch with elegance. His vision cut through defenses like a hot knife through butter, and his technique, artistry, in motion. Crowding himself as the FIFA World Player of the Year thrice, 1998, 2000, and 2003, and bagging the illustrious 1998 Ballon d'Or, Zidane wasn't just playing the game, he was redefining it. In the 2002 Champions League final, Zinedine Zidane captured the world's attention with a stunning left foot volley, marking one of football's greatest goals. This wasn't his first moment of glory, as it already led France to victory in the 98 World Cup with two unforgettable headers. Later, transitioning from player to coach, he steered Real Madrid to an unprecedented three consecutive Champions League victories, cementing his legacy as a footballing legend whose career is a saga of extraordinary triumphs. Early Life and Rise to Stardom in France Zinedine Zidane was born on June 23, 1972 in Castellan Marseille in southern France. From the moment he could kick a ball, he was smitten, his eyes shining with dreams sparked by the likes of Jean-Pierre Papa and Enzo Francescoli. Barely 10, and he was already dazzling the junior leagues, his feet dancing to a rhythm all their own at a local club in La Castellan. It didn't take long before whispers of his talent began to stir. But the real magic, it happened when AS Can Jean Varro spotted him and encouraged the team to snap Zidane up. After three years at Cannes Youth Academy, Zizou was weaving his future with every kick, every goal, every gasp from the crowd. This wizard with the ball didn't just inherit his talent from the wind, it's woven into his Algerian Kabyle roots that run deep and proud. In a time when his family faced the headwinds of immigration in the 50s France, they held tight, instilling in Zidane a fierce pride in his dual heritage. It's this pride this unyielding sense of self that fueled Zidane's rise, making him a beacon for every dreamer with a ball at their feet and a heart full of hope. It's 1989, and the football world is blissfully unaware that a midfield maestro had arrived at AS Can. Fast forward to the early 90s, and the name Zidane is synonymous with Can's unprecedented climb to fourth in League One, a zenith never before reached by the club. With 61 appearances that whispered of future greatness, Zidane's spellbinding footwork and visionary playmaking had fans and critics alike sitting up in anticipation. The secret of Zizou was out. The talent that he showed as a teenager at Cannes led to Girondin de Bordeaux to come with an offer that couldn't be refused. And Zizou immediately made an impact, leading Bordeaux to victories and silverware. The Intertoto Cup in 95 and a tantalizing dance with destiny in the UEFA Cup final a year later. His star was continuing to rise, marked by the 1995-96 to League One Player of the Season award, a beacon calling him to Italy's grand stage, Serie A, taking Serie A by storm and leading France to glory. On to Juventus, the old lady of Turin, a club rich with history in Italian football. Here, Zidane elevated his game to celestial heights, orchestrating back-to-back -back Serie A title wins and the 1996 Intercontinental Cup. His feet seemingly bewitched, dancing past defenders, his play reading akin to a grand master in chess, foreseeing moves light years ahead. The accolades poured in for Zizou, Serie A Foreign Player of the Year, the UEFA Club Midfielder Award, World Soccer Player Award, each one a testament to a football icon in his prime. Yet for France, Zidane's magnum opus was still to come. The 1998 FIFA World Cup. Zidane's two headers in the final against Brazil were not just goals, they were brushstrokes on a masterpiece that was France's first World Cup triumph. The nation erupted, and the Arc de Triomphe bore his image with a simple yet profound Mercy Zizou, a mural of gratitude spanning generations. The turn of the millennium saw Zidane ascend to a rarefied realm, achieving back-to-back -back FIFA World Player of the Year honors and steering France to European glory in Euro 2000, becoming a Galactico. 
Picture the summer of 2001. Real Madrid makes one of the biggest splashes in the football world that still ripples today. Zinedine Zidane arrives with a record-breaking transfer fee, painting the first stroke of what would become the Galacticos masterpiece. Under Florentino Perez's visionary presidency, the club wasn't just assembling a team, it was curating a gallery of modern football legends. Zidane, the French maestro, was the piece de résistance, joining the likes of Ronaldo, Figo and Raul. Zidane's impact, electric and immediate. His name is forever etched in Champions League lore for that impossible volley in the 2002 final, a goal so audacious it seemed to defy physics. And when La Liga was reclaimed in 2003, Zidane was at the heart, orchestrating Real Madrid's symphony of success on the pitch with unparalleled technical wizardry. Then, in 2006, Zidane decided to announce his last hurrah in the foray of football, Zizou's last dance with destiny. Zinedine Zidane, a maestro in cleats, spun an illustrious career stitched with moments of raw passion. He led his French counterparts to the final of the World Cup during his last chance to lift the trophy. The 2006 World Cup final, a spectacle edged in football history. It was here that Zidane's head met Materazzi's chest, dubbed as the headbutt heard around the world. A red card raised, off he marched not just from the pitch but into the sunset of his playing days. It was the grand finale of his 108th performance for France, a career curtain call that ended with his 14th ejection. In the theatre of World Cup finals, Zidane did not stand alone. He became the fourth to see red on such a stage. But this may have been the most impactful red card ever given in a World Cup final. His team went on to lose the match. But Zidane, the icon, the paragon of football finesse, took it all in his stride. Following the incident, Zidane partly attributed his reaction to repeated harsh insults about his mother. He expressed no regrets for his actions, stating that doing so would be akin to admitting the provocateur was justified in his comments. President Jacques Chirac of France lauded Zidane as a man of heart and conviction, acknowledging the provocation but deeming the offense unacceptable. Reflecting on the incident years later, Zidane emphasized the damaging nature of provocation, noting that most of his career Korea's red cards were due to it. He candidly spoke of his inability to tolerate such provocation, driven by his passion and temper. Zidane famously declared he'd rather die than apologize to Materazzi, the Italian player involved, yet also admitted that he couldn't have lived with himself if he hadn't retaliated and accepted the insults, even if it meant remaining in the game and leading France to another World Cup. But it was time to move on to the next chapter of his life, and in normal Zizou fashion, there was no looking back. Foray into managing. Starting with Real Madrid Castilla, he then ascended to the helm of Real Madrid's first team in 2016. His tenure was marked by extraordinary success. He became the first coach to win the Champions League three times consecutively. Additionally, Zidane secured the UEFA Super Cup and FIFA Club World Cup twice each, a La Liga title and the Supercopa de España. This string of victories earned him the accolade of best FIFA men's coach in 2017. After a brief resignation in 2018, he returned to Real Madrid in 2019, leading the team to another La Liga and Supercopa de España title, before departing again in 2021. Zidane's managerial style at Real Madrid was characterized by his resilience in the face of criticism. His philosophy was simple yet effective prioritizing the immediate challenges and the development of his team over external opinions. But Zizou's legacy is more than trophies and titles. His elegance, humility, and sportsmanship transcended the game, inspiring countless dreamers across the globe. When he hung up his boots and picked up the coaching mantle, the magic didn't wane. It only transformed. Zidane's brilliance wasn't confined to club duties. His leadership qualities and unshakable composure set him apart, not only on the field, but also in humanitarian work. Championing causes with the same passion he brought to the game, Zidane's goodbye to Real Madrid was more than just a farewell. It was a sign of his deep respect for the game and the chance for new stars to shine. Now. Everyone's wondering what he'll do next. Will he coach another big club or maybe lead the French national team? 
Whatever Zidane decides, it's sure to be exciting. Let's raise our glasses to Zinedine Zidane, the player, the coach, the man. Smash that subscribe button, give the video a like, and share your favorite Zidane moments and what team he'll manage to glory next in the comments section below. Check out some of our other videos on football's icons here.